Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to West Valley is Open for Business, our virtual tour series. We kicked this off back in April to make sure that we're bringing projects in the West Valley that are uh, timely and exciting to, to you all. Um, at times, you know, it's been difficult to get folks to, to come out and visit projects. Everyone's really busy. And so this is a great innovative way to make sure that we're bringing these projects to you on a monthly basis um, right there in your office or your home office. So with that, I'm really excited to, um, to feature, today we're featuring two projects in, um, in the city of Buckeye, the fastest growing city uh, in, the, in the region, in the state, in the country likely. So with that, I will turn this over to uh, your moderator today, which is, who is Mike Hoover, uh, our fearless uh, leader and co-chair of the Westmark Economic Development Committee and a uh, key economic development team player with the City of Surprise. Mike, it's all yours. Centra, thanks so much. And uh, uh, thank you for setting this up uh, in, in the midst of COVID while a lot of the economic development practitioners were um, really kind of uh, triaging our small business community and, and trying to uh, make sure that we have proper retention programs in place. Um, you were still working on how to connect uh, the greater business community with the wonderful projects that are still moving through uh, the West Valley. And um, over the last four months, we've we've had great success uh, highlighting several communities in the West Valley and uh, really dynamic uh, set of projects. And today, uh, you said that we're actually talking about two projects, but I would argue we're we're talking about three. Um, really, with the, the growth that the city of Buckeye has experienced over the last several years, um, that's a story in and of itself. And we're going to be highlighting uh, two developments inside of um, the city of Buckeye today with the Watson Road Corridor and the fields uh, at Verado. Um, so prior to uh, kicking that off, um, all panelists, I'd like to um, for you to introduce yourself, uh, what organization you're with, and then I'll turn it over to Susie um, to start the discussion about the city of Buckeye. So James. Uh, thanks, Mike. Yeah, James DeKramer, um, Principal Avis and Young. And uh, I've been working in the Buckeye trade area for probably a little over 10 years. We've got a really dynamic portfolio out there and I look forward to talking about it and discussing it. Uh, Bobby. Hi. Hi, thanks, Mike. I'm Bobby Mastracci with Phoenix West Commercial, designated broker, principal, and am the West Valley specialist. And I have with me. Hi, everyone. I'm Brandy Brave Boy. I'm with the Phoenix West Commercial team. Nice to meet you all. Thank you, Sandy. Hi, I'm Sandy Briggs. I'm also with Phoenix West Commercial and an associate broker here. I'm relatively new to Arizona, but have been in brokerage for over 30 years. Love to chat with all of you. Thank you. Before I turn it over to Susie, did I miss anybody? Wonderful. Susie, uh, yeah. you guys are experiencing a little bit of growth in Buckeye. Maybe we can talk a little bit about that. Yeah, just a little bit. Well, first of all, I'm, I'm Susie Boyles. I'm the Economic Development Manager here in the city of Buckeye. Um, and first of all, thank you for everyone for attending today. Um, and thank you to Westmark and Mike for, for putting this on. You know, as you said, these virtual tours have been a fabulous program during these unusual times and, and gives us a way to connect um, with development. So really just thank you for, for putting on this program and uh, thank you for, for letting us be a part of it today. Um, so again, I'm, I'm Susie, I'm the manager here in uh, the economic development manager in the city of Buckeye. and. Um, I'm gonna kind of kick us off with talking about, like Mike said, uh, we're experiencing a tremendous amount of growth. Um, and then I'm gonna talk specifically about our healthcare initiative as well as our retail initiative. I'm gonna try and keep my portion kind of short to about 10 minutes, because really I want Avis and Young and Phoenix West Commercial to be able to tell their stories of developments happening um, in the community. So um, I think I have control here. Okay, here we go. Um, so I always like to start um, Buckeye conversations with a little perspective. And so on this map here, you can see uh, Buckeye is 639 square miles. Uh, we go all the way from Wickenburg all the way down to Gila Bend, and we're the largest community by land area in the state of Arizona. 
Um, we're currently a population of 92,000 people. Uh, as Mike said, we're the second fastest growing city in the country currently. Uh, we were the number one fastest growing city in the country last year. And as you can see here, we've been in the top 10 fastest growing communities in the country for four years in a row. Arguably, we've been in the probably top 15 for probably about eight years. Um, we anticipate being one of the top 10 fastest growing communities uh, for years to come. Uh, we're projecting that our growth will be, will be 100,000 people uh, in population by this time next year. MAG is projecting our population to be over 186,000 in 10 years and over 305,000 in 20 years. So over the next 20 years, we're going to more than triple in size, just a tremendous amount of growth. Um, and at full build out, uh, Buckeye has the capacity to be 1.5 million people at full build out. So a tremendous story there. Um, I want to kind of go into the areas of growth that we're seeing. So we're going to start with residential. So in 2019, the city of Buckeye permitted over 2,600 single family residential units. Uh, we're on track to do about 3,000 units this year, just for the first eight months of uh, the year. So from January to August, we saw a 15% increase in our residential activity and our building permits in the community. So a tremendous amount of growth. We're seeing that growth throughout the community, but we're really seeing it in three major areas. So Verado and the Verado surrounding communities, in Tartesso and in Festival Ranch. Almost half of our permits are taking place in those three areas. But Buckeye's not the only place that's seeing a lot of growth. The West Valley of the whole is seeing a tremendous amount of residential activity. You can see here, numerous communities are seeing activity. It's not all of the West Valley communities, um, but Buckeye is excited to be a big part of kind of the overall growth in the West Valley. I wanna talk a little bit about our commercial activity as well. Uh, this past fiscal year, we did see 2.1 million square feet of new commercial development in Buckeye. Um, a big part of that is in industrial. Uh, if you haven't heard, Five Below has announced that they are building their 850,000 square foot distribution facility right here in Buckeye. Uh, they will be building at Miller and I-10. Uh, so we're real excited to welcome them to the community. But outside of that, we're seeing development in a variety of industries. So we're seeing almost 350,000 square feet in healthcare, almost half a million in retail, downtown development, education. So we have a variety of industries actively building in the community. And our pipeline, we continue to have people interested in being part of the growth in Buckeye. And so our pipeline is very healthy. We anticipate seeing another 2 million square feet of commercial development throughout the community again, in industrial, healthcare, retail services, and others in the coming year. I want to take time to sort of pause and talk about, well, what has the city seen during COVID-19 specifically? Um, and I think if you talk to a lot of the West Valley cities, you'll hear a very similar story from everyone, right? Um, and Buckeye's no different. We're very humbled and grateful that even during pandemic, we have seen some successes. And so we have actually seen a 20% increase in our sales tax revenue. We did see a slight increase in our lodging tax. We saw 50,000 square feet of new healthcare development either move forward or open. Um, again, industrial, five below, not only selected Buckeye, but started construction. Um, and in July, Buckeye issued 291 single family residential permits, uh, which was a record for the city. And the most that we had ever issued in one single month since 2007 during the boom. And so again, while there's these challenging times, Buckeye just continues to be so grateful that we're continuing to see positive investment in the community right now. Um, and so next, um, I wanna talk a little bit about um, our healthcare market study. Um, and so I'm gonna talk about our healthcare initiative and our retail initiative. I'm gonna start with healthcare and for healthcare specifically, when you look at the West Valley, uh, healthcare is a priority for Westmark. It's a priority in the West Valley. We're seeing a lot of successes, right? So we've seen Banner announce their bigger clinic in Glendale. Uh, Sun Health announced recently their expansion of their La Loma project in Litchfield Park. You have the ACOS building in Avondale. So the West Valley is seeing a lot of development. And again, Buckeye is no different. We saw 350,000 square feet of healthcare activity in the community. And healthcare becomes a, is a large focus for us. So about a year ago, the city launched our healthcare market study. And really the goal of this particular study was to better understand 
our healthcare market and how to help define the future as we continue to grow. Um, and so I have all of these reports that I'm happy to share afterward, but I want to kind of go into the findings of those. So we did a two phase study. And in phase one, we sought to understand what current facilities do we have and how do we compare to other communities of similar size? And what we discovered is we have a third of the amount of medical facilities as we should per capita as compared to other communities of, of similar size of population. So we're vastly underserved in healthcare. And so we looked at that and said, okay, well, if we're not serving them, who is? And so we launched phase two of this study. And you can see down here the data-driven results. Um, we purchased ED data um, and looked at where are our residents getting their medical services and what services are they getting? So I wanna clarify, we do have an emergency center in Buckeye. The Abrazo Emergency Center is located on Watson. It's extremely successful. It sees about 20,000 patients every year. But when residents aren't going local and they're leaving, this is where they're going. And so Abrazo West Campus, Banner Estrella are our top two. Um, it makes a lot of sense, uh, mainly because of proximity to our resident and our population. But the interesting one we always like to point out is the third most visited hospital by Buckeye residents is Phoenix Children's. And I think that's because people misconstrue the Buckeye population. We're a young family oriented community. And so when we saw these results and they came back, it made a lot of sense to us, but a lot of other people may not recognize that we're a young family community. And so Phoenix Children's being third on the list makes a lot of sense. Uh, Dignity Health and then others you can see kind of going down there of serving our residents. And then we looked at, well, while they're at these establishments, what are those medical services they're receiving? And we looked at it by diagnostic service line. And so here you can see by far general medicine, 30% of all ED visits by Buckeye residents are in general medicine. So we're vastly underserved in general medicine. But it's interesting, if you look at this categories as we go down, um, the specialty services include ortho, ENT, cardiovascular, OB. And so there's a variety of services that we need in our market. And what this really was telling for us was that, you know, not only do we need these services, but if these services were in the community, they'd be very successful because our residents are already receiving these services just elsewhere in the Valley. The third piece that I wanted to kind of round this out with is we looked at a physician's need assessment. So based on our population, we should have a certain number of doctors based on our population in all of these uh, service areas. And this shows really we're underserved in all of these areas as well, which really just validated the need to bring these services to the community. Um, and so that was an interesting um, adventure that we went on um, and very telling. Our healthcare market study has, has really opened the door for a lot of conversations to build a comprehensive medical campus in Buckeye, which is the ultimate goal. The last piece I wanna leave you with on healthcare is our payer mix. A lot of the time we get asked about our payer mix in Buckeye, those institutions that are looking to make investments um, are curious about that. And so between Medicare, Medicaid, and commercial, we're pretty balanced as a community, which is pretty healthy. Um, we have a unique and balanced uh, payer mix, and we can meet those needs of those healthcare providers. Um, I want to switch gears here and talk about our retail um, initiative. And so uh, like healthcare, uh, Buckeye is underserved when it comes to retail. We're growing so quickly um, that we can keep up. And what I think a lot of people don't realize is that we're underserved, but we have a very strong retail trade area. So we have 116,000 people in population, an average household income of 88,000. And again, we're a young community, uh, median age of 32. So what the city did was we retail, or we, uh, we surveyed our residents and said, as we grow, what are those uses that you want to see in our community? And you can see here the top five categories. It's grocery stores, it's warehouse stores, restaurants, bars, family entertainment, clothing and accessories. And what was unique to us is when we looked at this, we're like, wow, that's a variety of categories. And I think what that means to us is that we're so underserved that a variety of categories can be successful in Buckeye and that all of these categories can come here and find a home. So much so that our existing retailers um, that we do have in the market are some of the most successful retailers in the state or in the region. So our Walmart, our Fry's, our Lowe's, our dealership is 
producing double digit increases in sales year over year being Buckeye, it's because they're taking advantage of all the growth that we're having in the community. And so just an extreme opportunity, and you're gonna be able to hear about these opportunities, both healthcare and retail um, from our presenters. Um, but as I go, oh, did I lose control? Oh, there we go. I'm gonna end this with a polling question. Um, and so I have one polling question for you. Um, and so I think Westmark will pull my second poll question up. And if you could put up there, what uh, did you know about the growth in Buckeye um, before this session? Um, so hopefully, there we go. Um, and as you're taking this polling question, um, I wanna say there's really no wrong answer in my personal opinion to this question. If your answer is yes, uh, we wanna say thank you. Thank you for following the growth. Um, it's been exciting times in Buckeye, so thank you for following us. And if the answer is no, we just wanna say thank you for being here. You know, That's the whole point of, of Westmark and these virtual tours is to be able to take advantage of these situations. And so um, Westmark can show those results. Awesome, I love that. Yay! Um, I, I'm so glad to see that so many of you um, are following the growth and the success in Buckeye. Um, and so again, thank you for being here. My contact information is here. Feel free to reach out to me anytime. Um, I do post a lot of updates on our activity in Buckeye on LinkedIn. Um, but with that, I want to kind of wrap my portion up. And Mike, unless there's any questions, I'm happy to kind of introduce James to talk about all of his exciting things. Yeah, well, I, I'm ex I'm excited to hear James, but um, if it's okay, Susie, I have maybe one or two questions for you. Um, it's interesting growing up in Arizona and hearing uh, the conversation about how large of a university Arizona State was, um, and you kind of hear that all the time. You become kind of desensitized to the significance of a university like ASU and how big it is and what that means. And all the things that would go into creating a university that can expand that way. And in some ways, I, I kind of feel the same way about Buckeye, um, sure, for sure some parts of the West Valley, but specifically Buckeye, I mean, we're going on 15 years, um, really the last decade and a half where Buckeye has, um, from a national perspective, um, really been uh, a development gener generator for uh, people wanting to move and, and create lives out there. So. I guess that's a two-part question. The first one is, are, are you guys real, realize how unique it is to be a community uh, of that um, type of growth? But also, how has the community positioned themselves to actually be able to grow that way uh, that where you're producing quality uh, communities, but you're also able to engage with the development community uh, in, a, in a way that's prosperous for both uh, the, the community and also the investors? Sure, no, so yeah, so I would say that, so for your first question, kind of the uniqueness, right? Is it, It's 100% unique, and it's actually a really fun time, because if you look at the growth trajectory of Buckeye, um, what we do today really is laying the foundation for what the future will hold in the community. So it's really great to be part of those planning exercises. Uh, our city just approved our 2040 general plan, which outlines a lot of that, right? A lot of that, development in the future of what Buckeye will look like. Our residents participate in adopting that general plan. And so that really is the exciting part is we're planning for 20, 30, 50 years into the future. Um, and what we do today is really gonna set that tone for later. And I think the second half of the question of, you know, what is Buckeye doing today to really welcome this is um, I would say a couple of things. One, I think so much development in Buckeye specifically, um, but really the West Valley as a whole. I mean, if you look at kind of the greater Phoenix area and you look at the East Valley, um, they're, they're becoming built out. They're becoming, you know, restricted by land area developments. And when you look at the West Valley, it's just a different story. And so we're going to continue to see success in the West Valley because there's so much developable land here. I think the other reason why you're gonna see so much success in the West Valley and in Buckeye specifically is, is our workforce. And Westmark does a great job of, of touting the workforce in the West Valley. Um, really, this is where your workforce lives. And so 
we're preparing you know our our businesses to take advantage of the workforce that is already here buckeye specifically you know we we export like 90 percent of our residents for workforce every day and those businesses that are locating here really are capitalizing and benefiting from that workforce that workforce that wants to work closer to home that doesn't want to drive to downtown phoenix where they currently are and you know when people look at kind of our workforce and our offerings people are looking you know at that and again i think we're seeing that we're preparing for that growth because people want to be part of it and so conversations like this is really helpful of how can we tell the growth story and how can we start making those connections and connect those dots so that we can grow methodically and smart um, and make sure that what we're doing today is, is beneficial for 50 years down the road. So I hope that answers kind of the question. No, it, and it's it's just obvious. It's it's not a, for lack of a better word, a one hit wonder, just the consistent growth that Buckeye's seen and what you're seeing in the future. Um, I just don't want anybody to, uh, for lack of a better word, take that for granted because it's a, it's a truly unique story and it's special for our communities. So Susie, if you want to introduce your, um, your, your colleague in Buckeye for, for the next phase of this development, I'll uh, be very happy to listen to this part of the conversation. Absolutely. Well, I am honored to introduce James DeKramer with Avis and Young. Uh, as he mentioned, James has been a partner in Buckeye for a decade and doing development here. Um, and so without further ado, I really want to turn it over to you, James, to tell the story of all the activity and opportunities, really, that you see and you have for people that want to build in Buckeye, but more specifically at the Watson Road. Thank you, Susie. Um, yeah, it, it, the first part of the, the presentation obviously talks about Buckeye and the momentum and the tremendous growth story, and uh, all of that is true. And what I want to do is obviously focus a little bit on the Watson Corridor, which is where we have a majority of our properties listed. Um, again, tremendous success story across multiple industries. Um, our hotels are thriving. Our retailers are thriving, healthcare is thriving, and my screen just went out. James, that's for the video. Oh. So okay. if you're ready for the video, I can play it. Yeah, let's play the video.
All right, are we all back? Yeah. Okay, perfect. So, so let's dive in that. I, I love that video because it, again, building on what Susie talked about earlier, which is Buckeye's tremendous growth and all the future opportunities and prospects. I feel like that video really shows what's there today, but it also shows you that there's a lot of opportunities in the Watson Road corridor for people to take advantage of. Um, so let's, do I have control here? There we go. Okay, perfect. So here's like a little outline of how we're going to kind of flow through the presentation. We're going to start with Sundance Town Center. Um, Sundance Town Center was actually our first entry into Buckeye. Uh, my partner Matt and I took this power center listing on with Vestar uh, again, probably 10 years ago. And we've solved a lot of vacancy at the center and we put a lot of good end users in here. And as Buckeye continues to grow, um, you know, we continue to have more opportunities in this center. Um, uh, let's start with Walmart, for example. I, last I heard, I think they do about $110 million in sales, which is over $2 million a week. Uh, that puts this as a very high top performing Walmart. Um, the Fries across the street also does tremendous volumes. I've been told numerous times it's a top, top, uh, top five fries in the state of Arizona. And you know what does that tell retailers, medical providers, um, you know anybody that wants to conduct business and potentially plant roots on the Watson Road corridor? It tells you that there's a tremendous amount of weekly traffic, daily visits, uh, daily needs users coming to the intersection, spending money. Uh, Three million dollars of grocery trade a week is tremendous. Um, that's what the estimate is here at the intersection when you factor in fries. And, you know, we're now being told that Aldi is going to be starting construction sometime next year across the street. And I'll dive into that when we get to that project. But uh, the immediate opportunity at this center, we've got 18,000 square feet, office max, uh, perfect vanilla shell, uh, great position right in the middle of the shopping center. Um, we've also got the brand new freeway shops that were just constructed over here, um, adjacent to the freeway over by Carl's Jr. out in front of PetSmart. And then we do have a couple of other small vacancies, some in line near Walmart. Um, we are missing a lot of really good, healthy categories at the center. Um, there's not a brewery in Buckeye. Um, there's some other medical users who, who would benefit and uh, from being in a retail and environment that we could accommodate in Buckeye here at Sundance. And uh, we've got a couple other vanilla shell suites. And uh, another important story here is we haven't lost a lot of tenants through COVID. Um, our tenants here have sustained themselves. Uh, they're still open, they're conducting business and uh, doing quite well from what our sales reports tell us. So now I'm gonna move to our next project. Sundance Marketplace. Uh, for those of you that are familiar with Buckeye, about two years ago, this was just about 11 acres. Uh, we put one of our clients in here. Um, they took down the property and then we started to do um, pad deals with Planet Fitness. That was a build a suit deal. We sold Aldi their pad, Burger King, Quick Quack, and what we have left is a 100,000 square foot uh, pad that would be perfect for a junior anchor, mini major, uh, potentially a third party developer that would want to develop shops that might complement some of these users. Um, and this pad is fully improved off sites, on sites, everything is in, parking lot. It is a building envelope today and it is ready for somebody to come uh, and take advantage of. Uh, Burger King had a tremendous opening here. And like I mentioned before, uh, Aldi is going to develop this store, I think, in their second wave um, of stores being developed in Phoenix. So let's go to the next slide. Uh, these medical pads, in my uh, opinion, are, you know, obviously probably the most visible high profile pads available in the trade area. 
these are deed restricted against retail. So we do need non-retail uses here. Um, we were uh, able to put Hilton Home to Suites in here. They did a brand new, beautiful hotel. Um, maybe Susie, do you, do you recall when they opened? It was, I think last year, is that right? Yeah, they opened at the end of last year. Yeah, again, great looking building, uh, great product type. Um, in fact, it was the same developer that did the Holiday Inn Express up on the freeway. And when we get to that uh, opportunity up there, we'll speak in detail about that. But basically, uh, the Holiday Inn Express came to the market, opened up. Occupancy from day one was 90%, uh, 80% plus, very strong. So strong, in fact, that this uh, particular developer then um, took down this other pad to do his Hilton Home to Suites. So again, more another good success story for Buckeye. Uh, moving forward here, Pacific Dental, who is on the other pad, we sold uh, their pad to them. They were doing so well deep in line with Walmart uh, that they had actually outgrown their location um, as part of their real estate and growth strategy. They were uh, purchase and develop only, so they went across the street. Uh, but we do have three more pads in here that are available. Uh, I've got links to the flyers, and I'm certainly happy to send flyers to anybody who wants more information, but we have uh, three right-sized pads that would accommodate anywhere from six to 10,000 square foot users, again, preferably medical, uh, to work around that retail deed restriction. Uh, but again, front and center, Watson Road, uh, strong traffic counts, incredible visibility, and uh, just really good opportunities here for, for people that want to own, build, develop, and, uh, you know, conduct business on this Watson Road corridor. So, um, like I mentioned before with Holiday Inn and their success, uh, I've got 11 acres adjacent. Um, we can subdivide this to suit. We've had some really strong publicly traded healthcare companies reach out to us and express interest in this. Um, we are working with a number of different healthcare users. Uh, we can accommodate retail here. Um, we do have uh, these two freeway signs down here that have been approved up to, I think it's 65 feet. Uh, again, taking advantage of the position there along the freeway and uh, taking advantage of some of the visibility, which in my opinion is probably the best attribute of this site. Um, there's residential being developed immediately next door that's going to be a higher density residential uh, offering that's going to be a build to rent product. Um, but again, I, I feel like that's another good story and, and another good economic driver for the trade area. All these homes coming online. Um, again, that these uh, retailers and healthcare providers adjacent are going to benefit from. So, you know, again, we've got 11 acres here. We can subdivide it to suit. Um, there's a number of missing healthcare and retail categories in this sub-market that if they wanted to own, this is a fantastic opportunity. Um, moving on. Now we're going to pivot across the street. Um, again, immediately behind Lowe's, we've got 30 acres. And as you can see from the map on the right, uh, that's just a conceptual lot split of how we can divide up these parcels and accommodate people. Um, we do have two or three hotel groups that are snooping around. In fact, one reached out to me last night and they're contemplating an offer. So that's good news. Uh, we do feel like there's another opportunity here for a couple hotel users, uh, different brands, different flags, different product types. We also feel that entertainment would go well back here. Um, if if and when Buckeye decides that it's ready for apartments and the economics support and sustain new construction, we feel like this is an excellent multifamily site also. Um, so if anybody has interest in large scale land, lots, pads back here, we would love to hear from you. Moving on. North of the freeway, um, the client that we work with here actually across the street just sold 92 acres for more residential development. 
which is a great story to tell for north of the freeway. Obviously, judging by the aerial, uh, a majority of the activity and uh, commercial development is south of the freeway, but we feel like north of the freeway, as things continue to mature, as residential units continue to grow and, and come online there, that north of the freeway is going to be a viable, attractive development opportunity. Again, hotels, medical, uh, we have a site plan conceptually here that shows three individual retail pads um, that we feel are a good opportunity for some missing retailers in the trade area. Uh, Chick-fil-A, Starbucks, In-N-Out Burger, there are a score of A-plus retailers that don't have a Buckeye location. And again, we feel like north of the freeway as things continue to develop and Buckeye continues to grow and mature, it's going to be a fantastic opportunity for somebody. And like I mentioned before, here are the property flyers. Um, I'm not certain that these links work. I think they do. But again, my contact information is all over these flyers. I am happy to send information, um, data, flyers, comps, any information that someone might need to fully vet out the trade area and evaluate their different opportunities. Uh, as I've shown kind of through the presentation so far, we again have a number of opportunities both existing at Sundance Town Center and ground up purchase and build uh, development pad opportunities in some of our other sites as well. Um, and I, I, that's really all that I have right now. If, if people want to ask me questions, I am happy to answer. James, I, I have a question. Susie did a really good job talking about the growth and and, and some of the areas where uh, Buckeye is underserved. Um, but I guess the question I would, I would ask just as kind of a layman looking at Buckeye for the first time, let's say, why the Watson Corridor? Why is, why is that area seeing this confluence of activity? Um, I mean, this, 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 this level reminds me of kind of Bell and Grand, which is an economic driver in the community I live in. But why, why Watson Quarter? Why is this kind of the genesis of, of all of that activity for this growing community? Great question. Um, you know, traffic patterns and, and traffic counts here certainly play a huge role in that. Watson is the north-south road of regional significance in Buckeye. It accesses downtown, it accesses a majority of the residential communities. And I think when Walmart and Fry's planted roots here over a decade ago, I think they brought that core critical value daily needs component to the intersection. And so I think all of those things, when the city was obviously planned, um, it was, it was planned with Watson Road being kind of that commercial magnet. And if you spend some time at Watson Road, it becomes very evident why. Uh, traffic is just astounding. There's a ton of activity. There's a ton of energy. Um, Miller Road, a couple miles to the west, obviously carries a little bit of traffic. But if you spend any time uh, along Miller Road, you can quickly see that Watson is the superior uh, north-south arterial. Um, and, and obviously with all of the commercial synergy and development here, uh, as Susie mentioned before, Abrazo's presence here uh, is a big deal too because it, it, it is where the community goes for their healthcare services. So, you know, in addition to retail and, and daily needs, you've got your medical, you've got gas. Uh, Circle K here, it was rumored to be their number one Circle K in Arizona. Quick trip opened up and prior to Circle K, it was Fry's number one fueling station. So again, across all different industries, across all different categories, users, brands, um, you know, we just have seen nothing but success from our tenants along this Watson Road corridor. So listening to your presentation and, and, and Susie's, one thing that, that struck me, and I remember in, in my years are Susie knows I embellished, but I don't know if it was three years ago or five years ago. Um, it was a pretty big deal when, when Buckeye got a new hotel. And in this conversation, it seems like the hospitality component is something that is not only maturing, but accelerating at this point. Um, 
so any comments on kind of why that is? It's it's something that struck me as someone who's been watching Buckeye for the last half decade that um, it seems like that similar moment is is here for hospitality as well. No question. Um, when Holiday Inn came in and they were in this uh, in this kind of putting the first hospitality deal uh, together on Watson Road corridor after their success, I think that was the ultimate feasibility case study. I think that showed people that there were uh, opportunities for other brands, other price points to come in and take advantage of uh, well, obviously what was proven to be a very strong um, little hospitality opportunity here. I think it also has something to do with the I-10 traffic. I think it has something to do with um, you know, uh, logistics, people traveling in from California, um, maybe they can't quite make it all the way to Phoenix, maybe the price point in Buckeye is a little more attractive, but I think all of those things in, combined play together to create what are really strong occupancy rates for the hotels that have planted their flags in Buckeye. And again, behind Lowe's, we've got uh, 30 acres there where we're priced appropriately and we would love to make another hotel deal or two and after taking on the marketing assignment there we feel confident that we're going to be able to land probably another hotel deal. Uh, I don't know that we'll be able to land two right away because um, I think someone will want to see how the success of a fourth unit in the trade area does uh, and then we've also got the the site north of the freeway it sits above grade it uh, is highly visible. ADOT owns the real estate um, that borders uh, that site that we have north of the freeway and uh, the I-10. So it is going to be the first commercially developable opportunity there north of the freeway. And again, for all of that traffic coming into Phoenix, that site is elevated, it sits above grade, and it's highly visible. So that's another great opportunity for hotel flags to come in and take advantage of what evidently is a very strong hospitality market here at Buckeye. Yeah, and I, I think you're going to continue to see it grow. I, I really um, uh, applaud the efforts, you know, several years ago to, to kick out the first uh, hotel, but it's, that's something that I wasn't expecting in this presentation. It was really nice to see. So, um, so I, I want to be able to provide enough time for our, our, our last presenter, Susie. Um, if you don't mind, uh, maybe an introduction. Sure. Um, so our our next presenter is is Bobby Mastracci and her fabulous team over at Phoenix West Commercial. Um, she's going to talk about a new medical offering that we have here in Buckeye called the Fields at Verado. So without further ado, uh, Bobby, I'll turn it over to you. Thanks, Susie. Mike, you guys are doing great. James, good work. I wanted to add one thing before we move on. North of the freeway, if anybody hikes, there's that great hiking Skyline Park. So if that's the only retail going up, it'd be great. It'd be great to have a Chick-fil-A or some coffee or something to get on your way up or your way back from a, a nice hike up there. But if you haven't been to Skyline Park, I highly recommend you guys head up that way. And then for the rest for us that couldn't make it back to home, maybe we can stop at that hotel north of the freeway, right? Take a little break. But um, without further ado, I'd like to introduce, well, I already introduced myself, Bobby Mastracci, and I have Sandy and Brandy with me to present the Fields at Verado, something near and dear to my heart. Been working on it since 2016. So just really excited to get this out to all of you. Um, whoops. Can I go back? There we go. Nope. Sorry, guys. Oh, how do I go back? Just wait one. Can somebody help me go back? Maybe here. One there. more. Is that it? Okay. So the um, Fields at Verado is just outside the 303 corridor north of I-10. It's in the master plan community of Verado, which is a DMV um, community. Um, there we go. So immediately surrounding our site, which you can see indicated in the blue, you have all the new homes surrounding the site. Um, those are all built and more are coming. 
Um, it is just west of the intersection of Indian School Road. Indian School Road is being expanded to six lanes due east directly to um, the Loop 303. And then Jackrabbit Trail is being expanded into four lanes, um, head directly south to get onto I-10. So that is definitely an indication of the growth factor that is expected to happen in that area. Um, Fry's has broke ground and will be um, hopefully opening finally in June. So that has definitely brought on a lot of um, interest to the area as well. Um, adjacent to our site is Verado High School, which has over 1,900 students. So any uh, pediatricians or pediatric dentists, um, that would be interested in our site, we welcome a phone call from you as well. Um, and then we also um, have Victory, which is an active adult community, which is um, in the community as well. So lots of diversity in demographics. Um, Sandy? Yep, I'm going to talk a bit about the feet about the features of the slide. Hi, everyone. Um, the site itself, uh, as Robbie said, is uh, immediately west of a bit west of Fry's and on the north side of Indian School. Um, it is planned and approved to have up to 40,000 square feet of space, which is primarily a uh, medical office, although we can also accommodate professional uh, office users as well. Looking at the screen at the bottom left hand corner, you'll see what we call building one, which is the Bailey Orthodontic building. Uh, it is just about complete now. Bailey Orthodontic is open. And at the south end of building, the building is about a 10,000 square foot building. At the south end of the building, there's about 4,500 square feet available for lease, which we'll talk about a bit more. Um, in the bottom right hand corner is building what we call building number two, and that is Dr. Hammond's uh, oral surgery building. Uh, that will be open in November. Uh, that is another 10,000 square foot building of which we can accommodate another 4,000 square foot user or smaller. And uh, then up above both of these two buildings, you'll see the plan point out the availability of two 10,000 square foot buildings, which can be combined into one large building of 20,000 square feet or two smaller buildings, 10,000 square feet each, and or a pad for either one large building or two smaller buildings. The um, property, if you have the opportunity to actually come out and look at the gorgeous site, uh, it's a beautifully landscape size of uh, the uh, features of the building are extremely upscale, partly because we're in Verado, but also because the doctors wanted a very upscale look. Uh, extensive parking, five per thousand parking, and excellent signage both uh, from the building as well as with available fire uh, signage. Um, We've already talked about the Buckeye demographics and how amazing the city itself is. Yeah, well, I wanted to especially have you look at the photograph. This is a photo of um, rendering of, I think it's actually a photo of the center of Verado. Verado is an incredibly upscale community that once it's fully built out, will have some people living there. Um, you're going to see a video shortly about Grotto, but it's a very special upscale area of Buckeye that is beautifully designed with golf courses, hiking trails, uh, a lovely downtown area, a neighborhood feel, and lots of things going on there. And it has been named the best place to live by Arizona Foothills Magazine. Average annual income, as you see from the slide, is $90,000 per year. And you already know that Buckeye uh, is one of the fastest growing areas in the West Valley. 
Um, Marauder itself has, uh, as I said, something like uh, 8,000 acres of land that's being developed primarily for the, this entire upscale community. Go back to Bobby. You're muted, Bobby. Thank you, Sandy. Can you please play the video? <laughs> yep, it'll pop up in just a second. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so five seconds of silence feels like 50 minutes <laughs> right i'll admit it's taken a little longer this time i don't know why it's kind of frozen on me so hang on just a minute no pressure none zero yeah none <laughs> You know, the growth in the Buckeye Southwest Valley of Phoenix is amazing right now. I'm looking so forward to growing with this community. We have opened our second location down here in Barado slash Buckeye, um, opened it in August of 2020. 2020 has been an interesting year to open a new practice, but we're excited to be here and to serve the people of the, the Buckeye, the Litchfield Park, the Barado areas. The site that we have here at the Fields of Verado, there's four pads. Um, currently, we have two buildings. They're roughly about 10,500 square feet per building. Um, in my building, I've taken roughly 6,000 square feet. We have leasable space of roughly 4,500 square feet left. Um, that 4,500 square feet is available to be leased ASAP um, in building the building where the oral surgeon's at. They're just a titch behind, but they're gonna be able to be leased out fairly quick as well. And then on the other lots that we have, the, the full, fully improved pads, um, those have architecture done, they have everything ready to go. So one of the things that we noticed, my partner and I, when we looked at this piece of property and building this development, was that there was a lack of professional services in this part of the valley. The space that is for lease would, would ideally go to medical slash dental, um, slash professional services. It's a great community, great people. So what I recommend people looking to move to, to move their business or locate a second business in Buckeye, absolutely. I think the growth out here is just unbelievable what's going on out here. Awesome, thank you guys for playing that. Um, so a little bit about the history. Um, oh. This is sensitive. Oh, thank you, thank you. So in 2016, like I said, we started the journey looking for an acre pad site for Dr. Bailey and um, couldn't find anything that would really pencil it out. So we talked about his retirement and where he was going and um, the ability to lease out any overage of the building and trying to stay within the SBA component, uh, we found a four acre site that was as um, the same price as a one acre site. So we brought Dr. Hammond in and um, acquired the four acre site and took the four acres and um, divided it up into four one acre parcels so that we could build um, a building for each of them on um, one of the two buildings that are, are built now and still be within the SBA, SBA construction. So when you do an SBA loan on a new construction building, you have to occupy about 60% of it instead of 51% of an occupied building. So that made the, the project pencil. And um, uh, Verado has, uh, is very exclusive class A, so we had to make sure that everything was built to their specifications and to um, meet the doctor's um, retirement um, portfolio. We still have those two pad sites ready to go. Um, we facilitated hiring a, a project manager, so it's something that 
you know, you can't be one to everybody. So uh, we brought in uh, on a project manager to facilitate the construction and the site split. Um, each doctor did their own SBA loan for each of their buildings, like I said, and um, we're the exclusive broker leasing out the balance of the project and also considering um, selling off the two um, pad sites that are available. I don't know why I can't no. see it come up. There we go. So like I said, we put together a team. Um, we have the two investors, Dr. Bailey with Bailey Orthodontics and Dr. Brad Hammond with Northwest Valley um, Oral Surgery and uh, Faxiology. And we contacted uh, Braden Management, Ron Barrett, and he um, pulled together the development team, the um, the engineers, the architects, and um, pulled that part of the project together and um, to make it happen. So if you're in a position that you wanted to develop a project and not sure how to get started, we definitely have the, the diverse team of experts that we um, com compile together and or help orchestrate the development of the project with you. Do I need help here? There we go. Sandy, why medical? Well, this is a, a repeat of what you've all already heard, that there's a shortage of uh, practices to service the needs of the residents of Buckeye as well as Verado. And so medical, especially since our anchor tenants are uh, medical, medical is, of course, um, what makes the most sense for these two years? for these two first two buildings, probably for all four of the buildings. How do you run it? Bobby, here we go. Um, that's a great photograph of the Bailey Orthodontics building. And on the right, you can see the amazing signage, which we um, and the city have allowed to make available to tenants in the building. Um, the photograph on the left is the back of the Bailey Orthodontics building. Um, medical, again, makes so much sense for this expanding community, especially since we're directly across the street from the high school and just down the block from the um, new Fry's and the Fry Shopping Center. So it's an expanding community with a shortage of uh, medical services to uh, service the needs of the broader community. Here we go. Here's a, a photo again of one of our two buildings. Uh, you can see in the bottom right hand corner the floor plan of the Bailey Orthodontics building, which we call building one. The, the gray area to the right is the north side of the building, and the white area to the left are the two available, well, one large space of about 4,500 square feet, which can be demised into two spaces. And that, that is available for lease. Uh, and that is the premier side of the building in terms of signage, because you do have the ability to have strong signage along English Row, which is to the left um, or the south side of this particular building. The, um, we mentioned before that the there are two buildings like this, uh, both of them at the south end of the property, both of them with space to release them about 4,500 square feet on the south end, the Indian School side. And the uh, Forley property is currently in gray shout condition. Uh, with um, the slab is not yet laid because for a medical user, it makes more sense to have the slab not yet poured so that the plumbing can be accommodated. Next slide. Okay. 
Okay, this is pointing out some of the features of the building. We already managed it a very upscale. The property is with extensive landscaping and gorgeous finishes. And it's just a real upscale look with the, the canopy shade, as you can see in the bottom left hand side of the each of the front sides of the single story building. Um, of course, they're energy efficient buildings with uh, single story buildings only, great exterior building signage, issues, and also mine unit signage also available to tenants or someone who might be interested in purchasing pad and putting up their own user building. Can you start the video, please? <laughs> Action. <laughs> <laughs> All right, smile, everybody. If you need braces, we have a good orthodontist. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have any polling questions while we wait? <laughs> Mike? As far as the, um, so Christina's operating, is it the, the video right now, Central? She's trying to log in? Okay. Uh, I will make a plug. So I play uh, golf uh, out at Victory Golf Club. Uh, and there's nothing better on the weekend in the morning than the Bloody Mary because they give you a strip of bacon that's this big uh, yeah. end over end. Uh, so just for that, everybody should go and visit Victory. Right. That sounds incredible. <laughs> uh, yeah, if we can. Yeah. yeah. So we actually um, have some some computer problems going on with the video. So I think what we could do is certainly send the video out to the to the audience. I don't know, Bobby, if you want to kind of give the high level purpose of what you would be showing there, and then uh, we'll send it out to all of the attendees. Not a problem, Sintra. Thank you. What we'll do, can we continue on with the PowerPoint? We just have a couple more slides left if you guys can hang in there. I know we're three minutes over, but we just need a couple more minutes. Okay. I don't know how to bring the slide back up to PowerPoint. If we could just skip the video and go to that. Yes, no? I, I think we're on that for you. We can or cannot? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Come on, let's go, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see it though. Well, in the video, I just wanted to feature a little bit more about the neighborhood to tell you guys about it. The, the neighborhood is absolutely beautiful. You can see the skyline of the white tanks right around it. So actually from those, um, the building where Dr. Bailey and the, the field of Colorado is absolutely beautiful. They also, also have, it's that neighborhood, that community was established in 2012. So it's been developed for over the past eight years and it is absolutely beautiful. I hope you get a chance to come check it out. And the home residential growth that's happened in that community, there's over 500 homes that have been grown in Verado just this year. And they're projected for another um, like 6,000 homes to be developed right there. As Ms. Suzanne Boyles like acknowledged earlier, the growth is coming. It's it's faster than they can keep up. Also, there's about that high school that's right across the way. It is out is really nice and it, it's a staple in the community. And there's over 11,000 students right at that high school, right adjacent to those buildings. So and then 11, what's that? There's 1,900 in the high school. 1900. Oh, that's right. That's 1900 in the high school and 11,000 within like a 15 minute radius. So thank you. I appreciate that. And then um, there's also a unique feature that Verado brings with the, the different business clubs and networking opportunities that they have. So that brings a, a different element to most businesses that come to that community. The DMB allows the community, the businesses to incorporate into their signature events. And this is where the whole community comes together and features most of the businesses. There's over 40 that work in the Buckeye 
Verado Oh, did I miss something? Sorry. Go, Lucy. Okay. All right. So one other uh, feature to acknowledge is that Verado has this community group called the Giving Tree. And that's significant in the way that it helps the businesses that are part of that community connect connect with the philanthropy and the nonprofit organizations, which is like amazing. You're, that creates a bond with the community that you can't recreate anywhere. So it's very, very exclusive to that community. And if you've been there, just like you said, Mike, at the golf course, everyone remembers there's so many things that stand out in your mind about that community. So it's just important to feature that, that it's not just about the buildings there. While they are amazing, beautiful, there's so much more that comes with just that location alone. Along with the foot traffic, CCV is just, just to the west of this site. And there's over 800, um, 800 traffic site, over 100 visitors in that community along the street, the same street where those the fields of Verado is located. So it's a great opportunity. Yeah, and one last thing, talk about COVID and how the Oh, yes, okay. And one of the beautiful things to mention is that um, this community is so tightly knit that uh, one of the restaurants there through COVID, of course, they were significantly affected well, all of the neighborhood bonded together to support this restaurant, and they would buy gift cards and vouchers and advanced meals, chipping in to help each other. It's that kind of community, you know, leave it to beaver style. We're very close knit. So it's really a great feature that goes along with that location. So I just wanted to highlight that to everyone interested so you'd learn more about it. There's also a website, verado.com, and you can check it out. Just saying. <laughs> and how does she know? She lives there. Yeah, it's nice. I, I'm partial. I love it. So that, I was going to say, take a look all of our contact information, but you guys stole my thunder. So just remember, Phoenix West, West Valley, just uh, Google us, www phxwc.com and give us a call and we're your best broker. James will allow you to do some retail with us though. How's that? No, it's That's wonderful. lovely. Thank you. Great job, you guys. <laughs> Team player. <laughs> Quick question, Sintra. Um, I don't know if we have uh, are able to put up the questions. Um, if we aren't, then I have just a, a, a closing question. Yeah, if you can go ahead with the closing question. I think we're a little bit frozen right now, so. Okay, no worries. Frozen's okay, especially if it's <laughs> um, All right, so this is the question I have. So we 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 did a wonderful um, discussion about kind of the growth and, and the scale of Buckeye all the way down to kind of the hometown personal feel of it. So for each individual panelist, I guess what is the one word that you would use to describe your relationship or experience in the city of Buckeye. And I'll start with Bobby because I want to surprise her. Uh, <laughs> I would just say, um, you know, I'm a huge advocate for the whole West Valley and I am from Pittsburgh, which is the friendliest city in the world. Um, I've won that numerous times in the West Valley feels like home. Everybody treats you like family. Um, and everyone supports one another. And we, in this presentation, um, the city of Buckeye embraces their community. And we we do appreciate your support in um, Sintra as well, Westmark, and the support that you give us. So I would say in one word, love. <laughs> Brandy? Oh, I think heritage, heritage all the way. With the north of it, history, where you have the older generation who meets just south of it, which is the younger generation. And that Main Street corridor, the Heritage Park, it is like ideal for the blending of the two and people who have, you know, great values and want to be connected. So I would say heritage for Verado. Wonderful. James? Yeah, I mean, I would, I, I kind of want to, piggyback on what everyone else said because obviously I've been out there a long time and I've worked closely with the city. I, I guess what I the word I come comes to mind for me is just supportive. Um, the city is fantastic. Uh, there's a sense of pride, there's a sense of belonging and place. Um, you know that's kind of a buzzword right now, a sense of place, but I feel like Buckeye 
you know, they, they are supportive, they're friendly, um, they're very proud of their community, they're committed to it. And, and you know, everything from the leadership all the way down to, um, you know, people that live and work and, and play and hang out in the, in the area. There's just, uh, there's a genuine sense of pride and place and uh, it's a very supportive, you know, just a healthy place to be. That's That's been my experience. So Sandy, you have to top all three of those comments. What would you say? I'm sorry, what was your question? The question is, in one word, how would you describe your relationship in Buckeye? Okay, um, I think that Buckeye is a fabulous growing area, and it's, it's a very, the um, officials from Buckeye, including Sudi especially, are terribly responsive. And so it's wonderful to work with uh, a, a city where um, it encourages the community to grow and is so supportive of those of us who are trying to assist with that kind of growth. That's wonderful. And I'll steal a phrase from Sintra here. Uh, I'll leave it with my favorite economic development person in the city of Buckeye. Susie, what is the one word you would describe um, for what you're experiencing in Buckeye right now? Sure. So if I had to choose one word, and I'm going to pull a mic on this one and go rogue and choose two, um, but I would say um, my two are opportunity and visit. I would say if you haven't actually visited Buckeye recently, um, we're such a different community than we were five years ago, 10 years ago. If you haven't made the trip out, I would leave you with come out, uh, visit the community. It's something you have not experienced before. We're not the old Buckeye. It's completely different community. So. Well, Buckeye turned from a town to a city not too long ago and uh, and not too yeah. long into the future. It's going to be one of the biggest cities in Arizona. So thank you all for what you do in our West Valley communities. And um, thank you for your wonderful time today. Sintra, before we log out, is there anything else we should be um, uh, commenting on? Yes, three things. So one is I love Buckeye. I love Verado. My word is connectedness. Um, the, the, the second thing is my favorite mayor of Buckeye, Mayor Jackie Mack, will be awarded with uh, Westmark's Inspiration and Leadership Award this year at our annual uh, event, Best of the West, and that's coming up on October 22nd. So make sure you're there um, to celebrate not only the West Valley, but certainly Mayor Mack and all of his great accomplishments in that community. And then uh, finally, uh, our next um, uh, West Valley Open for Business tour is going to be on October 20th, kind of same time, same place, and we'll be featuring uh, Globe companies in uh, in Goodyear and uh, a project. So I look forward to seeing you all. Thank you so much for supporting this program. Can we end Thanks, it with everybody. Us? Go West, young man. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you Bye, all. Everybody. Bye. -bye.